I've never seen so many people want to be there by your side. But then you turned to me and smiled. You took my breath away. All right, I want to show you something a little bit strange. Um, it's the afternoon. This afternoon feed up. Everyone's come out and about. Everyone's doing fine. But I do want to show you where Tina's at, and I'm not real sure why. I have never seen that dress you're wearing or the highlights in your hair that catch your eyes. I have been blind. So Tina, who has been staying in this pasture since last Friday, it's been almost a week. For some reason, she's way over at the end of the pasture. Y'all, hold on, we'll drive over that direction. Lady in red. Tina, you have that same stuff over on the ground. She's dancing with me. There's nobody here. It's just you and me. It's where I want to be. There she is. Cause I hardly know this beauty by my side. Oh, I never will forget the way you look tonight. Do -do 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 Tina, you want to dance with Daddy? I've never seen so many people want to be there by your side. God, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know why she's here. Oh, no. The other birds are coming. <laughs> Wanda needs more room to dance in with that little spot that allows her. Uh -oh. She's trying to break it down. And Carl just not seem like he has the energy to pursue her. <laughs> oh, I lost her. There she, did she go behind the barn? There she goes. But the goats are good. The goats are coming up. Are you going to oh stand up? Oh, my gosh. Poor Wanda. <laughs> she wants to play the game so bad. Y'all know what the game is. Does it matter if you're a guy or a girl? You all know there's a game. Wanda, it might be the face, baby. Smile. You can't make that sucking air face. Smile. Look how pretty Debbie is compared to Wanda. Debbie comes up and smiles nice and cute, and, and, and Carl looks right at her. Then Wanda comes up with suck it. That goofy. Oh, gosh, Jamie. Poor Wanda. Look, it's her face. It's just close your mouth. Oh, baby, I feel bad for her. She doesn't understand how her her face can be. And look who's taking that spot back. And Debbie has taken her spot back. And Wanda just doesn't get one. And that's one right there. Tina, hurry! Tina, poor Tina, girl can't have tomatoes, you can only have grapes, and so I give her grapes and everyone else wants to take them all. All right, let me continue with what I was saying, is that there are so many doctors who cannot afford to go to American universities because of obviously American universities charge uh I don't know how many times more than other universities. So there are a lot of Eastern doctors and, and, and Western doctors from other countries, Mexico, you name it, 
who get their degrees from other countries, from other universities in other countries, yet come back here to practice medicine. Guys, you already know this. And so we're blessed to have a vet who is not from the United States. He's from a Latin American country who has a degree from a Latin American veterinary school who has a veterinary, he works at a veterinary clinic, but he, <clears throat> he offers a unique service in the fact that he travels. He's a traveling vet. And it was a little bit disturbing. Uh, now, obviously, I don't speak that fluent of Spanish to where I understand every single word he's saying. That's why I always have Luis come along with this. Luis helps me translate. But uh, you, 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 you have noticed that even Luis sometimes struggles with the translation because there are some words that people just don't use. And so what I do know is that he said we need to cut back on the proteins. That proteinas, I understand that word. He said less proteins, menos proteinas, y'all, menos proteinas. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, fine, less proteins. So I've cut back on some of the proteins. He also said she looked a little bit overweight. So we're going to cut back a little bit on the proteins and cut back a little bit on just, you know, gouging. You know, he said more fruits, more vegetables. He never said no tomatoes. He never said no tomatoes. I would have understood that because tomato is tomato, tomate, something like that in Spanish, okay? He never said that. But if it's in fact what a lot of you guys are saying appears to be gout-related, it appears to be gout, then it's possible that what you all are saying is that you've been told, you guys who have gout, or you know someone who has gout, I don't even know what that is, is that tomatoes are, are of a certain type of plant family that might not be the best for her. And so fine, I'll do anything I can. I'll do anything I can to help her. So we're going to cut back on the tomatoes and do more grapes. Do more of the leafy greens like the romaine lettuce we offered last time. We joke a lot about how every time we have an issue come up with a, a medical type issue, all of us have an inner MD. I'm no different. Something goes on with one of my kiddos. I'm real fast to start saying what it probably is based on what little I know and so I'm not upset that you throw out suggestions because I've in fact learned a lot from things you suggested but uh I don't like it when you start criticizing folks who have degrees in medicine and uh I will I will say that the downfall the the only thing that's difficult working with this particular vet is the fact that there's a language barrier and that's sometimes hard to get past. Here's a quick random question. What do you think? So let's see how good you guys know Lester. Let's see how good you know Lester. What do you think I'm going to draw your attention to right now? Let's see how good you all know me. What do you think I'm going to try to draw your attention to right now? I've made this same walk with you guys a hundred times. Seriously, I've made this same walk with you a hundred or more times. What do you think I'm going to draw your attention to? Huh? Huh? How many of y'all are in your mind saying he's going to talk about that darn grass again? Lester's well, gonna talk about that darn grass he got growing. Well, you are exactly right. I am talking about grass. Grass seed that I put out three weeks ago. We got a couple of rains and man, it's looking good. I'm so happy. I'm also gonna talk about romaine lettuce. I'm bringing some out to offer to the babies uh, and their Aunt Tina. Hello, who would like a bite of romaine lettuce? This comes straight from the garden. Just a couple of bites each 
a couple of bites each. Now, you'll, no, you can't do that. That's what you can't do is take it and then spit it out. So they'd like to take it and spit it out and then eat it off the ground. Tina, could I offer you some romaine lettuce before it's all gone? You might want to go ahead and bite into it, Tina. Everyone else likes it. <laughs> so there's romaine lettuce all over the ground now. I don't understand why y'all do that. So you're probably saying, Lester, you should put it in bite sizes for them. Okay, so watch. If I do that, I need, my, I need to put my camera down for a moment. You know what I'm going to do? Put my camera between my knees. Hold it right there. Break this up into small bite sizes. Okay, so here we go. That worked out pretty good. Let's see if there's going to be any... Ouch! Okay, so that's what... There's no... They're still doing the same thing. They're still knocking it out all over the ground. There's romaine lettuce all over the ground. They're also biting my fingers just for fun, just to hear me scream. No one's really eating it until it's on the ground. Then they eat it off of the ground. Okay, so there's a lot of romaine lettuce all over the ground right there. Now, I'm going to say this, and, I'm gonna ho and I hope that you hear me loud and clear. I cannot believe a couple of you guys came at me. You're going to come at me and demand an apology to the farmer who feeds in the dirt and say, Lester, you always feed in the dirt. Okay, so a couple of things. Number one, I may feed on the ground, but in the grass. So, yes, Lester does feed on the ground very, very often, especially with our goats when they've been sick so that they cannot contaminate each other with illness. But I feed in the grass because if an animal was to come by and eat off of the grass, guess what, y'all? They all eat off of the grass in nature. Duh. But what they cannot do is eat off of the dirt. Because if you were to put feed here on the dirt, now the birds are different. They can use their beaks to pick, to pick up what they need. But cows and horses trying to eat off the dirt end up gumming up this. And not only this, but they if it's dusty, all of those dirt fumes, the dust particles go into their lungs. And they can, it can cause respiratory illnesses. So you have to really think about what you're saying before you say it. And don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad, guys and girls who've come at me. Don't feel so bad because you know what? I am the king of not thinking before I speak. But uh, like I've explained to several people, other internet farmers... We are, in fact, a rescue and a sanctuary for many of our babies. So we are, we are held to a much higher standard than others. We are, we are. We are held to a much higher standard. Is it make it easier for us? Absolutely not. But as far as our clean water and trying to you know, provide the best care for our babies. All of us can say we love our animals, but you got to really, really, really think hard about what is the best life for your animals. And you have to strive to do that. And so I uh, did not mention any names when I talked about the particular farmer who lost an animal to a uh, respiratory illness, but it wasn't hard it was not hard at all to know why such animal suffered that illness. And, uh, yeah, you got to really try to keep your um, feet off the dirt, friends. You got to keep your feet off the dirt. But, uh, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. It's funny how you get better and better. And, you know, when you're young and first starting out, it's uh, difficult to know it's like I tell Jake and Brian all the time. Uh, an example recently was whenever they were trying to bring Moo home. Uh, I think Moo had gotten out. Jake and Bree were trying to get him home. And Bree went and grabbed the uh, carrot stick, which is a, you know sort of a whip 
off the back of my dad side by side. And I says, no. I says, you are not going to stand with that cow. You're not going to spank that cow. You're not going to swat that cow. Uh, he got out because of our negligence. Our negligence is not going to cause him to get a whooping. Now, would the old Lester have said that? Probably not. But the Lester who knows that the folks who are heavily involved in rescues and sanctuaries and the standards that we have to live by to call ourselves such. I'm walking along here. I want to show you guys this grass seed. Man, this grass seed has come up and it's looking so good. Just all along this pond and down through this pasture. You know, it's funny. I was, uh, you can't let things bother you. And I'm the world's worst at letting things bother me. But you have to remember that there's always going to be somebody who's going to find fault with stuff. You learn from your mistakes. Look at all of that grass growing right there. And guys, it's only, it's only going to continue to grow throughout the, uh, fall hey here's something that you can always look about look i've all, always said that they would not be able to do that right there if their bellies were not full if their bellies were not full you'd see them up standing by the roll of hay you'd see them up standing waiting by the feed barrels but they see dad in the pasture but they're not running over to dad saying, feed us, feed us, please drop some grain, please. No, you know why? Because their bellies are full. Oh my gosh, I love this. God has really blessed us out here. What we need is the same stuff to happen over at I'm a Survivor. And we're working on it. We are working on it. Look, what a great, look, look, look. I just, what a beautiful view. The birds are out eating the grass. The horse and that donkey are out eating the grass. Grass that was not there three weeks ago. Go ahead and take a drink now. No, you're not gonna do it. You wait till it's full. Okay. So today we're changing out waters. You know, this time of year, water doesn't get bad as fast. When the weather's nice and cool, the water will stay cleaner a lot longer, at least from the algae and the stuff that grows in it. Having water in direct sunlight is your number one thing you want to try to avoid, if at all possible. Now, out here, my only other option was to put the water underneath the tree, but my worry then was that all of these things are gonna fall down into the water and I didn't know what effect that would have on the water taste. So I thought I'll just move the water over to here where they have the spigot and possibly come by at some point and build me some kind of a, a covering for it, like a little roof maybe. High enough to where it's not gonna spook the animals to go under it, but it would keep the water out of the direct sun. Are you coming to share the water? Are you coming to share water? So I want to show y'all how I've been trying to work smarter, not harder. And an example is when I unloaded the seed spreader, the fertilizer spreader, I put it here on the trailer, knowing that it would be almost impossible for me by myself to lift it up. Using the trailer, I can kind of guide my tractor back. I can lower these arms here, these three-point arms. So now that we've lowered the arms down to the right level, there was no work at all. It was just a simple matter of lowering the arms to the right level and then sticking the pins in to hold it there. This third one will be just as easy. I'll have to lower it down to my spot like so. This is alfalfa pellets for her energy. Here, baby. So now what you see right there is a small concoction made right here on the spot because she did not come up for dinner. Where are you going now, baby? I'm going to stop talking about you. How about I just stop talking about you? 
Let's put the phone right there so people can watch you eat. While I put all of these feeds back where they belong in the back of the side by side. Okay. These are the three bags. I'm just lucky that I had them with me. I um, unloaded them out of the truck today and I'll take them back. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> Guess I'll just stand here for a minute while she eats and give her company. I'll just keep her company right here. I've never seen you looking so lovely as you do tonight. I've never seen you shine so bright. You are amazing. I've never seen so many people want to be there by your side. But then you turned to me and smiled. You took my breath away. I have never seen that dress you're wearing or the highlights in your hair that catch your eyes. I have been blind, lady in red. Tina, you have that same stuff over on the ground. She's dancing with me. There's nobody here. It's just you and me. It's where I want to be. Because I hardly know this beauty by my side. Oh, I never will forget. The way you look tonight. Do -do 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 Tina, you want to dance with Daddy? I've never seen. Oh no, the other birds are coming. Look, Tat the brat is not just leading the charge; he's running over here. He's running so afraid Tina's gonna get something he doesn't got. He doesn't get. Tina's going to get something we don't have, y'all. Let's go see what's going on with her and Daddy. He's like, Daddy don't sing to us no more. <laughs> Tat, look at him, leading the way. You better settle it down, Buster. You better settle down, Buster Brown. You leave Tina alone. She's eating. She's being sweet and eating her snacks. Tess, like what you got there, Tina? What daddy give you? Why is he feeding you? Look at tiny little Charlie, little man. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Look at little Charlie and Susan. See, they do whatever Tat says. Tat's like a big bully. Thank you, Tina. She doesn't want Tat anywhere around here. Tat, she doesn't want you here. <laughs> Y'all, don't eat all of Tina's food. Do not eat all of Tina's food. They're going to eat all of Tina's food. Tina, I'm sorry, baby. I never thank the person who sent me these buckets. They're a really neat bucket. And I love the fact they have this kind of a handle on them. Makes them really easy to carry around the property. And you know, the way that Longhorn Lester's is laid out, there's a lot of walking from the barn all the way over to where I feed up at. 
and the other bucket handles are great but they're not comfortable and this over here you can grab onto these things and it's actually doesn't hurt your hands at all so thank you so i'm gonna have to do something in a few minutes that i know there's not an easy way to do it i have to take my tractor inside the pastures here and put out my winter grass and there's not a way to separate carl from pasture to pasture to pasture while i do that they have eggs in one pasture they they're well i'm just gonna be honest i'm gonna have to point it out let me show you something so carl has actually knocked the gate off of the hinges over there he's actually hit it so hard yeah i don't want to talk about that he's actually hit it so hard though when i was in there that it actually knocked the gate off of the top hinge and so it was just dangling and so i took i took the gate all the way off and i cannot repair it as long as he's in this kind of a mood but nonetheless, I have to get inside these pastures and spread my winter grass. And I can't do it with the hand spreader. I'm going to have to get the tractor and use the big spreader. So he's not going to be happy about this. I'm going to just drive real slow. So as he doesn't get himself hurt, he's going to probably come at me. And the tractor, I know I'll be fine. The tractor will be fine. We don't want to hurt him. We do not want to hurt him. If I zoom in, you can see a lot of that winter grass has already popped up here and there. And so we will go ahead and drive the tractor across here one more time and get a really thick layer of that stuff. Darn it, they're gonna mess with her while she's trying to eat. Now you all may think this is a really cute thing over here. The horse and donkey eating alongside the birds. But guys, this is not a good thing. That is not horse food. That is not horse food and it's not made for you guys. This is not made for you guys. So what I have to do is put it up high and put it on the other side of the fence because the big birds can still reach it. The horses can't. But then they get, so it takes a little while. So now they're gonna move down to the next one. So, okay, hold on. We're gonna do the same thing over here. That way the birds can reach it, the horses can't. But sometimes what the horse does is she's pretty smart and she'll start doing that right there enough so that she'll knock the entire container to the ground and then nobody gets any of it the birds are hungry now tat doesn't have tat tat the brat's not scared he'll come up and eat right alongside the horses he doesn't care but especially tina who's a little bit more cautious and leery i'll walk this in here over to her where she can eat and not be so spooked by the horses. You know what I'll do? Maybe I'll put it on this far fence over here where their wire is at. That might be a little bit smarter. Working smarter, not harder. I think she can still reach it fine, but the horse and donkey can't. Let's try this here. But Tina needs to eat, obviously. We're so happy that she's eating. But look, they're gonna... So my job is to sit here and distract Carl while Jamie goes all the way around to the nest and she's going to take the four eggs out. Um, this is sad to me because I really liked, I really enjoyed those. No, I, I still enjoy the babies. I mean, they're in the other pasture now, they're not, they don't look like babies or act like babies, but it was so fun seeing them grow up and just all the neat things they did. So what I, uh, so but Jamie's right though, and a lot of you guys are right when you say that these babies, if they do hatch, will be born in December, January, and that would be a really cold time of year to have any kind of a bird species like babies out and about. All right, so we've done some barn rearranging here. Um, I do have more round hay rolls. I have to move into the uh, barn here. I have enough space to put at least one, two, maybe three right through here. Stack two on top. I can do a couple of rows of that and that will still give me room to get out the door here if I need to take my tractor out or the Argo. I moved the 
lawn mower into the corner right there, which is fine. The uh, white kitty's like saying, hey, what happened to my, what happened to my dining table? Because you guys know we feed her on top of the uh, boat. Her little snack. So that's about what I got for you today, friends. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. It's been a good day. Got a lot of stuff done these last couple of days. Come on, kitty. Let me give kitty cat something to eat and we'll be out of here. You guys go ahead and stand on up because it's time to dance. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.